old soldiers never die, they say. And that is certainly true of what became known in the Second World War as the duck. Built for a short life on the invasion beaches, many of these veteran amphibians are still going strong today. Although there's only one duck unit left in the British Army, they are still frontline vehicles. Part of strategic command, they must be ready to go anywhere at short notice. So every morning, it means exercises. For to handle a vehicle that's both a six-ton lorry and a six-knot boat needs plenty of practice. It was at the invasion of Sicily in 1943 that these awkward-looking newcomers first proved themselves. Acting as ship-to-shore ferries, they took part in the successful landing of 100,000 men, their equipment and stores on hostile beaches. After the war, thousands of ducks were demobbed and aroused the interest of buyers from all over the world at government surplus auctions. Going for anything from £300 to £800 apiece, they were ideal for jobs where a tough real amphibian was needed. Civil engineering concerns working on coastal and river projects soon had the duck as a standard piece of equipment. This job at Anglesey in North Wales involved laying a 15-inch outfall pipe well out to sea. The pipe laid, it then had to be cemented into position. A boat would have to operate from the nearest harbour, but with a duck, the adjoining beach is ideal. With a compressor in the cargo hold to supply air, the vehicle's low sides are perfect for the heavily clad diver to work from. All ready to go down, the bags of cement are passed over to him. Then he's away. With another duck replenishing supplies of cement from the beach and given some fair weather, the job is soon finished. into the shallows with a duck, change the gear from propeller to wheel drive, and up she comes like some prehistoric monster. About two miles off the coast of South Wales is Caldy Island, with its famous monastery of the Cistercian Order. There too, they found a duck useful. To supply their island retreat with essential stores, monks operate the duck from an island beach to Tenby on the mainland. At first, handling the vehicle was a problem. So, one of the monks was given a duck course at the RESC Amphibious School. Today, they're experts at it. The shelving beaches at Tenby makes a good landing area at any state of tide. On this trip, the cargo is oil to drive the monastery's generators. With a carrying capacity of two and a half tons, a duck is ideal for this sort of work, where short sea passages are made to and from hard, sandy beaches. Back of the monastery, the oil-fired plant supplies lighting and heating. And heating too for the hothouses, for one of Cordy's main exports is its home-produced perfume. In times of floods, the duck really comes into its own. This German naval unit was called into flooded Hamburg early in 1962. 
motoring 100 miles to the scene of the catastrophe, they could then drive straight into the inundated areas to rescue people and their pets. Britain rarely does a winter go by when the Army Duck Unit, based in North Devon, is not called out for flood duties. But wherever the RASC Duck Unit goes, Remy Fitters and Workshops must go too. For the age of these vehicles, the problem of spare parts and the constant corrosion from the salt water can make them quite temperamental. But when they are going, there's no holding them. Their six-cylinder petrol engines give them 50 miles an hour on land and a steady six knots in the water. There's a special pump so that the driver can blow up the tyres as he's going along. And if a leak starts when he's afloat, there are two bilge pumps to throw the water back overboard again. They can cope with pretty rough conditions too, especially heavy surf. The lieutenant in charge of a platoon of 16 ducks is in touch with shore or ship by radio. The ducks themselves, with a two-man crew, use hand signals. Duck's mothership, a thousand ton landing craft, has called them home. So one by one they go in to make the tricky drive up the ramp. There's a sluicing tide across that ramp, and once the wheels touch, the gear must be changed from propeller to wheel drive, and then up and in, like going into an awkward garage. The mothership is used for transporting the ducks from one operational area to another. Then out they go again, down the ramp one at a time to drop into the sea. Regrouped, they set off for the beaches, a highly mobile ship-to-shore taxi service. The duck is no chicken, it's true. But until a successor comes along, these old timers working in all parts of the world will have to keep on and on. They just won't be allowed to die.